Hi, I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Dennis Kuba. I'm Evgeny Donskoy. I'm Henry Larson. I'm Peter Toretko, and you're listening to the Game to Love podcast. Hey, welcome back everybody. And today is a very big day because we have the announcement of the draw for the Nitto ATP finals in London. And as you can see, it's already taken place, but I'm excited to go through it. Are you, JG? Yeah, mate. I've been uh, so so excited all day waiting for the draw. And we were just talking, wasn't we, on a call? And then we looked on Twitter and the draw had already been announced. So we missed the actual uh, commentary on the radio. <laughs> I know. It was mad. It was just like... Very bang. effective, wasn't it, the draw? Yeah, that quick. I said it was going to be a quick one. You seem to think it was going to be drawn out over about three hours or something. Well, there's like a ceremony and stuff going on. I don't know if that even happened. But like you said, Over-game. the draw happened very soon. And now we know what the two groups are going to look like. Yes, we do indeed. And, uh, well, should we just get straight on to it? Yeah, I mean, we, it, mate. I might as well look at the two groups. So obviously you've got team, what's it, team Tokyo. Well, so we've got team, Tokyo group, group. Group Tokyo 1970, which yeah. contains Novak Djokovic, Daniel Medvedev, Alex Zverev, and the little man, Diego Schwartzman. And obviously in the other group, which is known as Group London, uh, I believe, 2020, that they will now have Rafael Nadal, Dominic Team, Stefanos Tsitsipas, and Andre Rublev. So, oh, exciting! Just saying Pretty the names, there, isn't it? Just saying the names, just oh, get some chills, mate. Just going down my spine. Well, just let's waiting. start with Tokyo first, Ben, because for me, there's just the funniest story ever. I was telling you about it earlier, and um, before <laughs> when Schwartzman, I think he released to a, I don't know if it was like an Argentinian or Spanish publication. He was saying about which group he would prefer. Considering the fact that these are all like the best eight players there are, there's not going to be an easy group as per se. However, he no. said that his favorite his favorite group would be Nadal, Sitapas, <laughs> and Dominic Team. <laughs> <laughs> He's come out and he said that's the, that's the group I would prefer. <laughs> it comes to the draw and he gets Daniel Medvedev, Alex Zverev, and Novak Djokovic. And I hate to say it to him, but I think it's curtains already for him. I don't see yeah. him really picking up many wins. They're the three players he didn't fancy, and they're all like quite big, strong servers, brilliant, yeah. hardcore. And his record against them is not too good either. So for me, it's uh, the one big take from this draw is poor Diego. Poor Diego, indeed. And uh, well, you know, little Paquito, that... Paquito could be going <laughs> home early. A little Paquito, yeah. Uh, he looks like R- Rublev. Uh got his dream draw by the looks of it and uh, ended up with the exact people that he said that he wanted. So, well, Rublev, I don't know. I don't think that he'll be happy with it, but I think he'll be, he'd have been probably more confident than Schwartzman, whoever he got anyway, the way he's been playing this season on the, especially on hard courts as well. I think yeah. it's just super exciting just to uh, see Rublev now fresh don't forget, he's uh, he might have lost in that last tournament. But now we get to see the real Rublev back again. And are we going to see, see him back on court and really firing again and going for number six in we 2020? Need to, we need to not get too excited about this Rublev um, excitement. <laughs> oh, me, no. Like, no, I don't want to be negative on him, but you've got to put this into perspective. We're now at the ATP Nitto finals. These are the yes. top eight players. And, and at the end of the day, he's seventh on that list. Um, or seventh or eighth, I think it's seventh. Schwartzman's I, eighth, isn't it? I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, Schwartzman's eighth. He snuck in just at the end in the in the semi-finals from that other. Regardless, one. he's right at the back of it, and he's he's not going to be up. Like he's not expected to really win many matches or w- take the title. However, you look at the recent years. I don't know if you want to start. Look at some of the recent champions we've had. City pass win last year. Yeah, the year before Alex Verev. Yeah, so you'd you'd kind of argue that maybe is what they were then. Is that what where um, Rublev is now? Exactly. Well, I was you took the words right out of my mouth because I think that's the sort of trajectory he's on at the moment. We've sort of seen uh, Sitapas has fallen uh, fallen off a little bit just uh, in recent times, but he obviously still had the semi-finals over in the French Open. 
But uh, you obviously see Alex Zverev not been looking great, but then he obviously, after that US Open run, now he's been on a really great run and uh, obviously got to the final there in Paris, uh, did really well against Medvedev, just pipped by the better man. And that could be one person you don't want to be coming up and facing in this tournament after that Paris win is Daniel Medvedev because he looked electric, I have to say. Yeah, as, as much as I'm excited, I'm a bit sad as well for the fact that this is like the last tournament. It's like the last send-off, isn't it? And then we've got to wait a while to most <sighs> likely the new year and it'll be Doha, I believe. The last um, supper. We're going to continue with all the podcasts, keep bringing, up as, bringing out as many much content as possible. We're not going to stop, even if tennis does. However, this tournament, we're going to put everything into it. We're super excited to see who comes out on top. And yeah, I think the draw has actually made it even more exciting. Because it has. I think Rafael Nadal could be, um, I don't know, he could be licking his lips slightly. Yeah. Um, and That's obviously, it. I think Medvedev as well. I think Rafael <laughs> I really, I really like. So from a personal standpoint, being a, being very biased, I must say, I think I'm actually quite happy with the draw. Okay, well, that's fair enough. Uh, so that's from your Rafa perspective, maybe. But I don't think he has that much, really, to sing and dance about. I think uh, Rafa, it's notoriously the tournament that has eluded him in his career. He's yet to win the ATP Tour Finals. And I don't think this is going to be any different, to be honest. We saw that he was struggling on indoor hard against Zverev. He got uh, he wasn't at his best. He really needs to play a lot better than that if he's going to really go further in this tournament. But look who he's going to have to play. He'll have to play Dominic Team, Sitapas, the winner from last year, and Rublev, the five-tournament uh, winner this year. So I don't think it's really... a well, Team, obviously, US Open champion. Sorry, I forgot to say that, not giving him his due. <laughs> so three players who... Are those really the ones that you want in there? Or you go to the other side and you could yeah, have... I wouldn't want to see Rafa against uh, a Medvedev for Djokovic or Sverev. I wouldn't give him much chance in yeah. that group. <laughs> it's, it's in theory, a... I've got to be honest, Rafa's at the at the back of the pile, really. In yeah. this Could be in an indoor hard court. There's players, a lot of them who would fancy their chances against him. However, I'm just glad he avoided Sverev mainly. <laughs> you don't want <laughs> to see it again. Time. I can't see <laughs> watch that again. And I then... Pick and up on Medvedev. I think Medvedev would uh, take him apart too. Mm. Literally pick your poison because you think, oh, well, maybe he'd do better in the other group. And they're probably the only person he might do better against in the other group you look at might be Schwartzman. Schwartzman. <laughs> and Schwartzman, no one's really given him a chance. I don't know if you wanted to... I sort of tried to knock up a few uh, statistics from the head-to-heads and stuff just in the... Uh, last half hour, tried to just scramble around, just trying to get something uh, together for you guys. So hopefully uh, does it justice. Uh, if we just have a look at the overall head-to-head -head from Group Tokyo, uh, yeah. I don't know if you've got the uh, thing, you can bring it up. Yeah, bring that up. And we can just have a quick look there. Excuse all my tabs at the top. We'll be skipping around those. <laughs> yeah, before we do that, what I want to say is actually mention another YouTuber, Gil Gross. Uh, mm. I've got loads of you know who he is. He's a brilliant. He's really good on online. Go check out his channel. Uh, I saw he put out a tweet earlier saying you've got one group very good with their four, like got a brilliant forehand, like the forehand group. Then you've got a yeah. backhand group. <laughs> and it, what, okay, guess what these are? These are the backhand group. You look at the other one, other lot, mate. They've all got the very strong, powerful forehand. Whoa, this group graph, very solid bleeding. on the backhand. It, well, definitely, I wouldn't uh, say. I wouldn't say Medvedev or Zverev's forehand wasn't too bad, though. I think they've both still got pretty <laughs> hey, good. All of them are. They're all elite players, but it's just like pick, clutching at straws kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Schwartzman, as they'd probably say in uh, Champions League terms, has the group of death uh, in his mind. Uh, that's probably how he would class it. And uh, as you can see from the head-to-heads there, it's quite surprising to see he has a 2-2 uh, -to -two head head-to-head with uh, Alex Zverev, though. So that's quite interesting. But as you can see with Djokovic and Medvedev, oh, not a nine in uh, nine attempts there against those two. But quite interesting if we have a look at the... Oh, if so, I hope I've uh, arranged these correctly. If we can have a look at the indoor uh, one oh, so of it. Just, just to clarify, sorry, Ben, go back to that one. That was sorry. just overall. So this is the overall. This is overall. So. And just looking at this, the first thing that sort of jumps out is obviously Djokovic. He's got a favourable uh, <laughs> yeah. against all three. 
Uh, the only other one, Zverev against Medvedev. However, recently we've just seen what happened there, so I wouldn't. I would probably ignore that uh, that little bit of green yeah, there. I, would I think as that's well. a very even affair. And if anything, I think Medvedev edges it. We saw what happened in the Paris final and also the Shanghai as well last year. Exactly. And it's another big stage. It's a big tournament, big stage event. A lot of money, a lot of lot of money at stake as well. I know we was looking through some of the numbers. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh. The amount of money these players are making just turning up. Don't get up. injured. Don't get injured. <laughs> well, funny enough, if, if you do, there's two players waiting in the wings. They've also uh, yeah. got Berrettini and Shapovalov there. Oh. And I believe they're getting, I think, seventy-eight or seventy-six thousand dollars just for turning up. Wow. So it's pretty there pretty go. crazy that Berrettini and Shapovalov are just waiting in the wings and they're getting paid <laughs> almost hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, no, but each each match that for the round robins, they get a uh, hundred and fifty thousand dollars for each match they play. So I think that's win every match they win. Yeah, so yeah. every no, was it every match they win? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so I just wanted to have a look at. Uh, is it the? Is this the indoor one? Yeah, is this the Tokyo one? Yeah. So if we have a look at the indoor. I'll just try and make it a little bit larger for your eyes. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> as you can see, it sort of changes around. Like on indoor hard court, they've not really played much of, of each other, really. As you can see with Djokovic there, uh, he's not played Medvedev indoors, not played Schwarzman and one and one with Zverev. So a bit of an unknown, really, maybe going into this tournament. Would you not think? Uh, kind of, but... Even still, I just think Djokovic, all, all, to be fair, it's hard to say because I'm looking at this from a, without ignoring your statistics, sorry. Uh, yeah. I'm going to just look at the fact that Djokovic, Medvedev, Sarev are very proficient on hard courts. So I think they're all going to have really a favourable position over Schwartzman. We've recently seen Medvedev yeah. play Sverev. So yeah. I think that gives a good indication where them two are at. And then with yeah. Djokovic, it's Djokovic, like he's in his own sort of league, isn't it? Um, a little bit, but the big three. I always sort of put them on their own little bracket. And Djokovic on indoor <laughs> hard court, uh, is arguably like he's better than any other player on that surface. So for me, like you'd fancy him, he's got a good chance to beat all three of them. He definitely does. Uh, He'll be a favorite, a quite a heavy favorite in every every match he plays. I think so. I think they're probably the obviously the closest odds will be against Medvedev. Medvedev uh, is likely to bring the biggest challenge to him, I think, especially he'll have a lot of confidence coming in after Paris now. He knows yeah. that he could take out uh, the best in, well, the best in the business on indoor hardcore, which was Zverev up until that point. And uh, now Djokovic, we just have to wait and see. Has that rest done him the done him good? Or uh, is he now a little bit rusty? You know, I don't know. They never get rusty, though, the big three, well, do they? <laughs> Jackie's saying there, Djokovic not super motivated. Um, I understand for wow. a start how you doing Jackie thanks for joining us and hey. thanks for joining us all our loyal supporters we've got Melez Ken Lee Thomas Rock The Lamb uh, The Lamb's there I think Andy. I saw Mary early on Andy thanks for joining us guys we're not ignoring you just so much to yeah. talk about today <laughs> definitely and um, yeah with Djokovic not being motivated I think it's harsh um, he got to his year end number one and he kind of put took his foot off the pedal a little bit. But this is a big tournament. Yeah. This is one which he will want to win. Being Cash. second in the all-time rankings as well for most times winning this tournament. Uh, only Roger Federer is number one. I'm mm. sure he's going to want to add another title here in the ATP finals to equal Roger Federer. Um, that means a lot to him, no doubt. Uh, when you get to this <laughs> level, them guys are always so against each other. They want to do and be the, the outright champion on every kind of um award and for him he's going to want to try and equal roger federer for sure oh yeah definitely i mean he's i don't care what they say they often they're often quite humble and saying oh (laughs) the numbers don't really mean too much to me they definitely do he's vocal about it though Djokovic. he actually says that uh, these numbers actually do mean a lot to him and one of the things that he was really keen on uh breaking was the weeks at number one record and that was why that was so important for him to just seal it just yep. so that he had that. I don't think he would have probably been that bothered about that tournament otherwise. The ATP 500, he probably was just like, eh, I can give take or leave this. And we know we've got some other tournaments coming up a bit bigger, more on the line like this one that you yep. can save yourself for. And uh, I think he's going to be back to his best. Do not expect to see Djokovic turn up like an absolute like uh, fish out of water. Yeah, I think he's just going to be the same old Djokovic. You're just going to be hard to break down 
and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he you see him in the final this year. Um, oh, it's interesting. I'm going to the comments now. Emma's saying Zverev and Medvedev will go through the group, I feel. Very Ooh. bold. Melez agrees there, saying the same. Wow. And we've got well, a lot of love for Med, actually. Charlie saying Med has it in the bag. Wow. Uh, let us know, guys. What do you think? Who do you think is going to go through? I'm going to say my prediction now. I'm actually going for Djokovic and Medvedev. Yeah. Uh, I think Zverev's not going to... I don't know. I think he's not going to go through. I know I, it's really hard to say. He's been playing just so well. Um, but recently, Medvedev beat him. I think that will be the same outcome again. And yeah. Djokovic is Djokovic. And I think he's going to be really rolled up to try and equal Roger Federer for the most um, ATP final wins. So for yeah. me, he's going to be right up there as well. So it's between them two to uh, be, well, number one and two in the group. I think so. I think it's a really fair assumption as well, considering the results of recent weeks. And you just got to take into account Djokovic is Djokovic at the end of the day. I think this is going to mean more to him than uh, the last tournaments. And uh, he's not going to want to... This is the last time this is ever being held in London. They've obviously had a 12-year stint there. It's going to be moving elsewhere. He'll probably want to be remembered as the last person to win there, I'm sure. He won well, the on the subject of that, I hope the ATP... Um... I don't know if it's possible now because all these plans have been, they've happened well in advance. Obviously, as you said, it's been moving to Turin next year. I hope they can mm. extend London for one more year. It's a nice. shame not to allow the fans there uh, for like the final send off. This year would have been huge. I would have got tickets for it for sure. Yeah. And it's a bit disappointing that we're not going to be able to go back there again. We have to go to Turin now. Uh, don't mind that. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't mind that. But hopefully they can extend it to London. I don't know if that's possible, but I would love if they did, like a because of the whole COVID situation, if they were yeah. to, to a, were able to sort of extend it one year, that'd be that would be my ideal scenario. Yeah, that would be great. <clears throat> I, w I would I would love if they could do something like that again, or maybe make it still a regular fixture within the calendar. Maybe create another tournament. I don't know. I don't know if there's the the calendar's very congested as it is. It just seems like a place that you've got to play tennis at. It just the atmosphere in that place is electric, and uh, I think all the players love it there. So, yeah. But I'm sure they'd also lo love it in another country as well, especially if it's not your home territory. Uh, don't forget Andy Murray. He won it there when he was uh, world number one. I believe that was back in 2016 or 2017. But I don't think there's been a home winner of, the, uh, of this for a long time, obviously, due to it being there. Uh, so maybe we'll get to see maybe someone like Yannick Sinner moving up and playing in Turin. You never know. Well, we know how good the Italians are. They're, they're that <laughs> great chance. So, like yeah. you said, it's a good point. I reckon the atmosphere will be brilliant. We're going to try and get tickets for, if not next year, the year after. Yeah, for uh, sure. We've got Omar there. A bit of love for Sverev saying Sverev's going to go all the way and win the tournament. Well, wow. uh, a bit more love here for Zverev. Felipe saying Djokovic and Zverev uh, will will go through the group. It definitely so has a chance. It's, it's, I think everyone has their own opinion on this, and every opinion is a right opinion in terms of like, there's no right or wrong here. It's very tight. All of these are elite players, and anything really is possible with these top in the top echelon of tennis players. Definitely, yeah, definitely right. Uh, I mean, we've both sort of given our take on this group. I think we both sort of agree that we see it going to the winner of Paris and the world number one. Yeah. Uh, Zverev, for me, I think he may uh, get found out if he's playing the similar sort of game that he played against Medvedev against Djokovic as well. I think if you slow down, you start making errors, Djokovic capitalizes. Well, the big thing with me, it's not even just that. Djokovic is the best returner ever to play the game. If Zverev can just be firing these massive serves, I think Djokovic is going to get some of them. Yeah, I know it's not human, but he's going to get to a lot more than most. And if he does neutralise his serve, for me, Zverev's good, but he's not that good. He, he's prone to a lot of mistakes and uh, he can be beaten. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He can be. And, he, he and definitely... Djokovic certainly can neutralise the serve. Medvedev, I feel like he can just sort of wear him down over time. I think that Djokovic's mental side of his game could, is so important against someone like Zverev as well. Just in the big points, in the business end of sets and stuff like that, he knows how to get it over the line. And Zverev has a little bit to learn on in that regard. You saw it a bit against Medvedev. He sort of crumbled away a little bit when the pressure was on. And obviously, credit to Medvedev for playing so well. But yeah. it, it, after the promising opening set, he didn't really follow it up and... Uh, He'd be looking to improve. He's still improving. He's still young. Still twenty three, isn't he? <laughs> so he's yeah, still yeah. got still got a lot of a lot of time uh, left in the tank. So uh, 
Yeah, I'd look forward to seeing it. I think he can still win a few more of them himself. He's, it's his favourite surface, unless they change the surface. <laughs> one, thing, one thing we are ruling out a little bit with Sverev. Uh, I know Omar there saying we're disrespecting him slightly. Just I'll give him a bit of praise with the fact that he did win this tournament two years ago. Yeah, he did. So um, I think he only, tonight... only him and Djokovic have won this tournament in this group. So if you was based it or basing it on that and its previous uh, experience here, then you've got he goes right up there. I think, uh, and if it was the same Zverev that was playing at that same time when he won it, I would actually tip him to go all the way again. But I don't think it is. And I think there's a lot of stuff going on outside the sport with Zverev right now. And I think even though he got to that final, I think there were still signs that mentally he just needs to just get over a little bit of a hump. And I think he I think he can do it. I don't doubt he has all the ability and talent. And I will him to like become like f fulfill that potential. Just uh, I just don't think that he's there yet. But as I always say. Prove me wrong, <laughs> Alex Zverev. I always love him to prove me wrong. And I was cheering him on for the last tournament. And he unfortunately came up a bit short, but to a very good player. Yeah, well, let's move on to the other group. <clears throat> yeah, Rappers let's have a group. Quick, uh, let's make sure I've got this one right. So this one's the other one. Just make sure, see if I can make it a little bit, uh, squeeze it in a little bit more. There you go. Make it a bit yeah. bigger for you. There you go. So in this group, as you can see, in the overall head-to-head, -head, and I'm sorry, I've uh, called this, uh, I've labelled it wrong. This is my bad. It's not London 1970, London 2020. I was in a rush, all right? <laughs> That's all right. Anyway, anyway, so yeah, Nadal has a winning record over everybody there in uh, in this group. But I don't think it's on the, his preferred surface, isn't it? I think this is where it's all going to suddenly become unravelled. This, well, let's uh, talk about the surface, actually, because I think that's a really good debate. We can actually talk. We could do a whole podcast on it. And I've seen yeah. other people talking about it in the chat, saying, do they even like indoor hard court? Why yeah. have they decided that the ATP final should be played on one surface every oh, year yeah. and it be in the same surface <clears throat> every year? Um, yeah, exactly. Would it not make more sense for the ATP finals to have a surface which changes every year? I think so. I think, well, we said that there's no masters on grass. Like yeah. why? How come that's a, a thing as well? Like the grass court season seems to be over in a month, and then it's uh, then we're on to just the back onto the hard courts again. And uh, I don't think it's fair for players who are actually good on the surfaces. I think yeah, switch it up a little bit. We'll have one. I think, on I think the main answer for it would be practically because of the weather, right? It's always going to be towards the end of the year, and then November. Is there many clay courts or? Um, uh, What's it? Sorry, grass courts where you can actually play on readily available, or even indoor, outdoor hard courts. No, but then you make, or maybe you create a new surface of indoor grass courts where it's just all year round. It's just kept all year round by there's just a, a one guy who's there, a groundsman who just keeps the grass in perfect condition, ready for this one tournament every year. You could have that. They could surely that there's someone somewhere that could create. If it's for Mate, a you love grass so much, if Wimbledon's gone to your head, you really uh, want to see one on grass one year. I would love it. I would love it. I think Federer would love it too. <laughs> but so is a lot of other players. For me, it I should think... just be I think it should change. I just don't like the idea like that clay. it's always indoor hardcore. Why not clay? But the thing is, people will then argue, oh, that's not fair, because then Rafa's gonna win all the all the years it's clay. And then when it's well, not, you're gonna you see other that. people win. Yeah, but you say that. But did he win in Rome? No. Schwartzman beat him. And then uh Djokovic won it. So it's not really true. He doesn't not going to win everything on clay. He's just going to win the French Open every time. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> we'll leave that for another podcast. I'm sure it's a massive so, debate. It causes a lot of uh, unrest. People are for or against changing it. or It's hard to really come up with a reason as to why it's always on the same one. But it is. And as you can see there, well, what's this? You've just moved over to, this is the indoor hardcore head-to-head. Yes. Um, and yeah, Between... there's a lot of blanks there as well. Yeah, so exactly. played each other. Indoor hard court, it doesn't really come around too often. Um, no. So, this so is there you I mean. can see Nadal pass. He's played against Nadal once and lost. He's beaten team the one time he's played him. Rublev team's one all. Uh, team Rublev. Oh, no, sorry. That's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. And that's it, basically. Yeah, yeah. So it's literally you're just reading them from, uh, sorry, first I should explain, just from left to right. 
left to right. So yeah, Sitapas has been team once, lost to Nadal once, and then Rublev there with a one and one against Dominic Team. I actually think this group, despite uh, what other people might think, this is wide open. I think any one of these like guys could be going through to the next round. And well, it's a battle under- of the forehand. They're all massive. They've all got uh, brilliant forehands. Um, Nadal just- probably out of the four. It's his least, well, for sure, it's his least favoured surface. However, it is Nadal. And as yeah. Ken and Thomas were reminding me earlier, You've got to keep the face. The, the, uh, the, you've got to keep the faith in Rafael Nadal. He can pull it off at any occasion. He's one of the big three, arguably yep. the greatest of all time. He's been <laughs> yep. winning everything, and there's no reason why he can't break the duck and win here in the ATP Finals for the first time ever. Exactly. Well, I, I totally agree. If anything, it's going to give him the added. Uh, well kick up the rear to go and win it but he hasn't won it how many more years has he got how many more chances will he have to win it so that's going to be motivation for him but then you look at the other guys you've got dominic team who's going to be wanting to come back now he's probably thinking i need to finish the year with a bang uh sit a pass well me. team he, he comes second didn't he runner up yep last um, year was that last year and it was very close i think two tie breaks what separated it uh, so he's going to be really raring to go. He's had some. He's had a break. He's not played Paris. Yep. I know you're saying he had some blisters, but I'm not sure what was going on there. <laughs> yeah. However, he should be ready and raring to go for this tournament. And he was actually my pick to go to win the tournament a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, before before Paris sort of uh, ended, <laughs> Dominic Team was my guy. I think he was going to go all the way and win it. However, yeah. I have changed my mind since then. I'll reveal that at the end of the video. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll get onto that. But, but yeah, now, looking at that now, well, a bit of history in the tournament. Nadal, he's reached the final before against Roger Federer, lost. Team, obviously, that final against, um, what was it last year against yeah, Sitipas, yeah. who, who won. And Sitipas is the champion of this tournament. So we've got exactly. two runners up and a champion, then Rublev first time. Uh, <laughs> Rublev, no pressure on him whatsoever. No. Won more, the most titles this year, more than any yeah. other player, more than Novak Djokovic, who's been on a crazy run. Scary. Um, so if you look at the four of them, it's I would say a... the momentum is with Rublev. Yeah. However, the other three are a lot higher calibre. So you've got to take it all into consideration. I think, it's like you said, this is the more open group for sure. Oh, m- m- it's much more open, this group. I mean, you can make a case for each of these players going through as well. You could just say, well, Rafa on a down might go out because he's rubbish on indoor hardcore. You might say Rublev's going to w- go through because he's won five to, uh, five times. Sit a pass. He's going to want to defend his uh, tournament that he won last year. Obviously, Dominic Team, US Open champion, and he got to the final last year. There's so many cases for each. And you look at the sort of head to heads, it's so even as well. Yeah. You've got Team Rublev there, one apiece. I think Rublev might be able to beat any of these guys the way he's playing really at well, the moment. Hasn't well. Rublev, didn't Rublev beat Team recently? Was it not in Vienna? Did he beat Team on the route I there? I believe so. Let me, uh, I can just fact check that before we uh, dish out some uh, dodgy stats. Yeah, I think he did. And if he, like, that's what I'm saying. That's in, that's in Vienna, if it was, in Austria. We know how good Dominic teams there. Um, yeah, it so... was in Vienna, yes. It was in the third round, I believe. Yeah, third yeah. round. Set, straight sets as well. So, so he's going to be full of confidence coming up against a Dominic team. Oh, I think he should be as well. I think he should be confident against all of these people. He's won the most tournaments out of anyone this year. He's yeah. got to be confident. And indoor hardcore, he's been playing great on. I mean, yeah, he lost to Vavrinka, but you've got to remember, he just came off the back of winning two tournaments. So he's going to have to burn out a little bit at some point. Yeah. So I don't know. It's really interesting. Are we going to see the back? Is he going to come back to uh, back to his best again? Or is well, it I think be... this is probably our time, Ben, to pick the two who we think is going to advance from mm. here. Um, I think it's super difficult. Let us know in the comments, guys, who do you think are the two players from Group London to advance? Um, you can make a case for all of them. I know there's a lot of Rafa fans there. <laughs> it's hard to go against him. I reckon Ben I'm... will, and that's why I'm reluctant to pass it over to him. <laughs> no, I, can feel his ang- I can just feel him going against him now. You, 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 can't, you can't go against him. I'm surprised. <laughs> But yeah, for me, uh, if he plays the way he has played uh, all year, I see Andre Rublev going through. I'm not sure what position. And 
I actually see if if he comes back to his best, I see Dominic Team and Rublev going through this, and I see Sitapas actually going out if because he hasn't looked great. He went out to Umber, don't forget, in that first match of the last uh, tournament. And uh, Nadal, I'm just going to put it down to just not good on the surface. And oh, the Sitapas, they took Djokovic to five, didn't they? In a, that was a Grand Slam match, French Open. Yeah, I know. It's clay, though. But I just think when he, he didn't come, like, move on from that and actually kick on and do better, he just sort of, yeah, just a poor result. Obviously, Umber's good, but he's not really... The winner, the by the way, you're talking about. The winner, the guy who won it last year. The guy who I think is right behind me. Is he not there? Look. <laughs> There he is. <laughs> is he there? I can see him just. I'm He's like, just so about in the... You're trying to make me change my picks and I don't really like it. But yeah, I'm just going to stick with it. I'm just going to say Rublev team. They're the two going through. You watch. Well, now Nadal Naveen, Naveen agrees. He's gone for Rublev team. We've got Andy saying Nadal team. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Carl Morgan saying Nadal Rublev. I think we'll come through it. So me, I'm going to give mine. You need to give the order as well, Ben. I'll, get, I'll let you have some time to think because then we can work out for the who's going to be playing in the semi-finals of both. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah, yeah. Let's do uh, that. So for me, I'm going to go. My number one advancing from this group is. Well, this is. I'm not even thought about it. I've been talking about it. <laughs> it's so hard. It is really hard. It's not Nadal. Nadal's going to be my number two. So I think Nadal's going to advance, and he's going to be my number two. My number one. I think it's tough, but I'm going to stick with my gut of what I said before the tournament, and that's team. I think team's going to win the group. Ooh, and uh, Nadal's going to be my number two. Uh, Rublev and Sitipas are going to go out. That's, un- that's a fence. It's, it's, well, it's safe, but yeah, it's possible. Yeah, it's the top two seeds from the group. But... Oh, Ben, don't give me that rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not playing it safe. This is not me playing it. This is being realistic All and right. honest. But Melez, I they're think... saying Sitipas team. No, I th- and well, Thomas I think Rock going from the Dow City Pass. Rublev to win the group, team to come second. There you go. Rublev is going to win the group. Yeah, I'm going to go all out and I'm going to say Rublev's going to take the tournament by storm. Jackie's disappointed. To... You can see Jackie's disappointed in me already. Let's yeah. know who you've got, Jax. You're out of the good books now, mate. You're out of the good books. But yeah, okay, I think. So then, that, then they'll be playing who's in your number one and two of the other group? Uh, I didn't give a number one and two. Yeah, I think that. I, I think. I've got to go for Djokovic one and Med two, so it's probably going I'm to the end other up. Way then. I'm Med one, Djokovic two. All right, so I'm going to have Djokovic versus uh, Team in one semi final, and then Rublev Medvedev in the other one for me. Gosh, oh. yeah, my, my two semi finals are this: we will have Nadal Medvedev and Djokovic Team. Wow, I mean. Uh, Wish I could just bring this up. Wish we had a little bracket we could fill out to show <laughs> to show everyone. So, if that's the case, so you've got, so you said Nadal versus was it Medvedev? Medvedev. Nadal Medvedev, and then in uh, Djokovic team. Yep. Then what? Well, this is the big question, isn't it? Um, are we going to see the big three in a final? Or are we going to see some young guns there? I think Nadal's not going to make it to the final. He's going to get to the semis. I think that's just going to be a step too far. Uh, Medvedev, personally, I think the way he's been playing, I think that'll be, he's going to be a too tough a test for him. We saw what happened with Zverev and he was able to beat Nadal relatively comfortably. For me, Medvedev was able to beat Zverev. I know it doesn't work like this. It, it's a bad example, really. <laughs> I know. Because at tennis, this is not real life. You can't do that at all. You can't do that in sport in general. So but I'm just game. going to go off the. I'm going to go off the fact that I think Medvedev's going to raise his level. He's going to be so rare to go. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, he played. I remember seeing a highlight reel of him playing uh, Nadal. I think it was either last year or the year before, and mm. uh, he bottled that match. It was very. It was known. He tweeted out Medvedev earlier today yeah, saying, yeah. Uh, "Oh, that's the match I bottled." <laughs> I think well. now he's going to be that step above where he's not going to bottle the situation against Nadal. He's going to be leading. And he's going to keep the lead and win. So I think Medvedev's going to be in the final of the one. And then the other one, I've got Djokovic's team. This is where it's very tricky. And for me, it's completely 50-50. But I'm going to go with Novak Djokovic. Ah, so you've left me. So we'll have me. a Novak Medvedev final. You've left me with my uh, semi-finals, which would be Rublev Medvedev mm. and uh, Djokovic's team, I believe. 
Yeah. And I've actually got the same final as well. I've got a Medvedev Djokovic final. <laughs> so we're both going for the same thing, but in a different uh, way of going about it. But I think the question is who's going to win it, JG? Medvedev. Djokovic. Really? I'm going Djokovic. Well, that's my prediction. We're not going to do a dark course because there's no such thing as a dark course here. Um, no. Shame we've not given Schwartzman much lime. I just feel sorry for him, really. <laughs> it's pretty sad for little Diego. He's had the draw from hell. He's not the exact draw he didn't want. He come out in the publication and said, I do not want them players, and that's the ones he got. <laughs> um, like they went, they went <laughs> through them and just went, right, <laughs> that's Schwartzman's group. <laughs> We're yeah. not having that. You can't come out and say you don't want to play players. This is the top of the top. You've got to have to beat the best to win this tournament. So he's going to have to do it. If he wants to win this, he's got to beat the best. And so is, uh, so is everybody else. But yeah. I think Djokovic is the best at the moment. I think if he's well rested and uh, he comes back into this tournament, uh, raring to go, wanting to win it, he's just his retrieval skills being there. It's going to be hard to beat. He's got winning records against everybody that he's playing. Yeah, it's going to well, be real. I don't know if you've got the, have you got the statistic there of Medvedev Djokovic? Uh, yeah, yeah. I had the whole... Uh, I've got the one for everybody. I don't think you've shown that one. No, I've got the overall head-to-head. -head. So this uh, is the overall head-to-head. -head. And if you can maybe zoom in slightly to... Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah, fine for say. everyone. For Djokovic, uh, make it a little bit clearer because we've both got the same final. Funny enough, I didn't. We didn't plan that. That's just completely random. Yeah, yeah, literally. The one stat which is just bizarre. Look at Nadal, Djokovic. How many times they've played each other? <laughs> I know. Look at that. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. How many times can these two play again as well before those careers are over? It's uh, actually unbelievable. And how close it is as well. It's not even like our oh, one player sort of dominated. No, it's two more wins and Nadal's back <laughs> level. So so looking there, obviously Djokovic, Medvedev, they played each other six, six times. Yeah, and the, the, it's 4-2. So Do Djokovic won, winning four of them and... Uh, What's it? Medvedev winning two. Two. Do you want to see the indoor overall? Well, Willie keeps this... saying it's wrong, Ben, the group. The, the I, is it? Stats. I don't think it is. This is the indoor. So they've never played on indoor hardcore, though. Have they not? Well, apparently not. <laughs> this is what, this is what I've been through the statistics today. <laughs> this is in the main draw, bear in mind. I don't think they would have met in any other facets of the game. So yeah, of course. In the main draw, they've never played. Uh, yeah, they've never played each other. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So yeah, they've never played each other. It's going to be an interesting battle. Um, and that's well, I can't really go off the stats really to to come to our conclusion. I thought there might have been a match or two. It's still uh, quite but... close though, four two. It's not really like it's not a whitewash, is it? It's not <coughs> like uh, like some of the other ones. <coughs> oh, sorry. All right. The no one, worries. yeah, the one thing we should talk about though. I don't want to end this podcast any sooner, but I want to talk about this before we do. And that's Roger Federer. No Roger Federer. When was the last time you didn't see Roger Federer in one of these ATP finals? And how it's sad, sad is it, it not seeing him there? Well, it is very sad because we all know what a great player he is. He obviously leads the whole uh, record for the whole tournament. He obviously has six wins in uh, the ATP Tour finals. So it's just uh, just want him to come back onto the tour as soon as possible. Maybe we can see him. Obviously, he's now down to number five, I believe, in the world. So it'd be nice to see him try and get back into the big three again, make the big three, the big three real. Uh, not It's not the big five, is it? <laughs> well, maybe it will be by the end of the year. Maybe we'll have new Grand Slam winners next year. And the other crazy thing as well, talking about the big three, is that we're both discounting the fact that we're going to have two of the big three in the final. How many times have we done these previews and predictions and we've spoke about all these outcomes and all these young players coming through and all the form leading up to it, looking at head-to-heads. We've tried everything we can. And at the end yeah. of the day, what we get is like we saw at Roland Garros is the number one and number two seed, two members of the big three meeting in the final. And on the big stage, it seems to always be the case that the big players are always in the final. And I can't believe neither of us went for the famous Rafael Nadal-Djokovic final. 
Well, it, it well, it'd be a fairy tale end to the year, and maybe Djokovic could exert some revenge from that thrashing in uh, Roland Garros, which I'm sure that he would be. Oh, I bet he can't wait to get back onto a hard court to just get back at Rafa for that one, because that must have really stripped away some of uh, Djokovic's psyche and. Uh, he just is like an unbeatable persona on court, and that was just a demolition job by Rafael Nadal. Uh, I think that it won't affect him too much. It's Rafa on clay. Everyone knows what you're going to get, but just want to see Djokovic come back after that being a drubbing from Sonego. I know people were saying, oh, was it one of these ones he tanked? We'll find out. This is the tournament you'll find out because if he turns up to this tournament and he beats everybody... Well, he's not, he's not going to be motivated by the money. The money doesn't mean anything to him. He's no, a multi-millionaire. No. He's got tons of it. Uh, it's, for me, it's just all about the record. He wants to try and break every record there is in the book. Definitely. And this is another opportunity to do that. Yeah, just, exactly. just go into 12 uh, Travel 21's comment there. Yeah, sure. Roger hasn't won for about a decade. <laughs> So not convinced he would have challenged. I think it's a fair statement. Are we ever, going to, see, are we ever going to see Roger Federer back at this tournament? Oh, it's a tough. I don't say that. He qualified. He qualified for this year, so he would have been. He would have been completely eligible if he wasn't injured. But next year, next year is he going to be there? I don't know. Don't ask me that. It's a horrible question. I don't want to think that tennis might suddenly start losing Roger Federer because. That's when uh, I don't want to see the demise of the big three. I just uh, and I don't I don't want to see the big players eventually just getting thumped by loads of players as well. I want the big players to actually leave with some uh, self decorum and some uh, self respect left intact. I don't want to see them getting wiped off the court by some eighteen uh, year old newbie. That's just not going to be a nice uh, end to your career, is it? Like they've I don't know got newbie though, man. He's just. Um... I think his class is permanent. I think his style of play, the way he plays, I think he's still got a few years left in the tank. That's why he's been able to play for so many years at such a consistently high level. It's because of his natural ability. Like he's just everything just seems so natural and at ease for him. Work ethic as well, though, up until that age. The way he's managed to keep that going all the way up until uh yeah, is he thirty nine now? Be the big four oh next year, is that right? Um I, I, believe, I, believe, I believe so anyway that's because i think it's serena williams she's the exact same age if i'm not yeah he's uh, 39 yeah. yeah so serena williams exactly the same obviously these are two legendary players that in 2021 both hit in the age of 40 both still on the tour and both still sort of at the top of the game and uh if we see a grand slam win from either of them next year when they're 40 it's going to be uh, absolute scenes. I'm going to be. I think that they've got so they've got so much uh, credibility. These two players, and they've done so much for the sport that it just. Uh, I just don't ever want to see them retire. But I don't want to see them retire in a bad way either. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Kyle, they're saying. Well, he's reassuring you a little bit there, Ben. Saying he'll he'll be back if Fed can get to the quarterfinals of the Slams and win two or three titles and the odd one thousand Masters semi-final or final here and there he will qualify go on fed you can still do it we want to see it he just gets the crowd going imagine a wimbledon with no fed come however on, all them things he's saying it's not an easy feat um no nah. i know it's only only this there and that but we've got to remember there's a lot of quality players on tour and there's going to be people like yannick sinner uh alex dimon all these other young players coming through who yeah. are going to want to take this from him yeah uh, even like a Massetti or an alcaraz coming through in the next few years how well are they going to develop Playing against an old Roger Federer, are we going to see like the changing of the guard slightly? Wow, we want to see the grass court season back next year. We obviously missed it this year, really. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't had no Wimbledon, and uh, next year, hopefully, we get to see Roger back at Wimbledon. We'd love to see that again. Obviously, he's announced that he's coming back for the Australian Open, which is fantastic news. And he's going to get such a reception. Hopefully, if there's uh, able to let anyone in that stadium it's going to be booming for the return of roger federer we know yeah. that for sure so yeah and regardless to the actual um to the result the tournament's going to be phenomenal i'm hearing yeah. now from i think mary saying here that the london group is going to play on sunday so okay. it's going to start sunday for the london group uh, i'm assuming i'm not sure exactly how it happens but i think maybe monday then we'll see what the commencement of tokyo I, I would have thought so. I think that that's the reason that they uh, started 
Remember where we had the other one that was started on the Sunday, uh, wherever they're playing right now, Sofia. They yeah. started early so that the other ones, these ones could start on the Sunday, I'm guessing. Yeah. So, yeah, so they're going to start on the Sunday and then we're probably going to see the next ones on the Monday. Uh, excited to see what the first matchups are and we hopefully can bring you some live watch alongs. Well, oh. if it is Sunday, we'll be very busy Sunday. So, um, yeah, we will. Stay tuned to the channel because we'll be doing as many watch. Well, we'll try and cover every match, I think. Uh, there's going to be so many brilliant ones. Whether we have to take some days off work, probably worth doing, to be honest, because yeah, for sure. these tournaments don't come around too often. Once every year, it's the end of the year, the big finale. We're going to have tennis for a while at this competitive level. And so let's make the most of it and enjoy it. Yeah, ob yeah, obviously. Big farewell. Hopefully they can extend it, though. I'm, just, I'm clinging on to the hope <laughs> they can extend on, it for one more year. <laughs> Hopefully they can, but if they can't, we'll be giving them the biggest finale uh, on Game to Love anyway. Yeah, yeah. But the best way to find us, guys, is if you hit the subscribe button right now, uh, that will help. You'll get a notification every time we go live, so you won't miss any. That's the main thing to do. And if you haven't liked the video yet, please like the video. It'll help us show up in loads of recommended searches for uh, other tennis fans. And, uh, yeah, helps our channel grow. So we can't wait to see... Uh, when we get to the 3,000 subscribers, been a very, very great first year, wasn't it, JG? Yeah, yeah, for sure, mate. And it looks like we might be getting Mele saying we could be having a, a Rublev Rafa Sunday. <laughs> love that. Absolutely love it. Yeah, anything left to say, Ben? Or should we wrap it up? No, I think we should wrap it up there before we uh, go on too long and start talking uh, absolute jargon. But yeah, just appreciate everyone joining us. And uh, yeah, join us for the matches. They're coming soon. Yeah, let's see how Med, Med gets on. I reckon he can do it. I know you've got Djokovic, but we're probably going to be completely wrong and we're going to see a Rublev Swartzman final. <laughs> <laughs> <You never know. laughs> but anyway, see you guys. Yes.